And to discuss this further, we're very pleased to be joined from our Pretoria studios by Deputy Minister of Mineral Resources, Mr. Godfrey Oliphant. Uh, good afternoon, Deputy Minister. Thank you so much for joining us on news today. Good afternoon and good afternoon to the viewers. Deputy Minister, reports indicate that more miners have gone underground at Lang Lach that despite the latest incident where some perish early in the week. What is the department doing to prevent illegal miners from doing this? We have been working on this program of illegal mining at least for the past three years very intensively. To the extent that what we have been doing, we have been trying to rehabilitate some of the holdings, close some holes, and also where we could be able to make safe for people to work and license them, we have done that. But as you would uh, uh, observe is that the issue of illegal mining has been fluctuating in over the last three years. In the last two and a half years, we have been able to curb it, where some of the kingpins who are buying this gold from these people were arrested, and with lots of cash and lots of gold, and it subsided a bit. And as we close the holdings as well, people have been having gangsters happening, because the lesser the holes, they start fighting for access in what were territories of others. But having tried to resolve that, recently I suspect also is due to the good price that is uh, attributed to gold, uh, the increase, they have increased activities again. So Lang Lakhte is one of those that have come, but there are four provinces that are having these problems. Gauteng be one of them, uh, Northern Cape being one of them, especially for diamonds, Free State, one of them for gold, and Pumalanga as well. So it's, it's a problem that we have in the country, mm. which has got some international dimensions. The international dimensions in this case are that wherever there have been mining, any mining jurisdictions, we have been discussing how to curb illegal mining. Mm. The best way of de dealing with it is to legalize it. But South Africa has been in mining for long over 100 years, and some of the places are really dangerous to go to. So those are the areas that we don't want people to go to, but despite the uh, unfortunate and regrettable incidents that have happened, uh, Abu Zama Zama keep on going back. Deputy Minister, look, the issue here is always this question. Who really should then seal off a mine after it's not been utilized? Is this not part of the mining contract for the mine owners? You would know that the mining laws started to be, were tightened only after 1994. Mm. The law that we're talking about that made things better started getting implemented in 2004, which is the, uh, the new law that governs mining. But before that, for the past 100 years plus, uh, there's been some irresponsible mining taking place in the country. That's why today we have over 6,000 uh, derelict and ownerless mines, where you can't trace who the owner was because it's been changing hands over many years. Mm. This has become the liability of the state. So far, we've been able to prioritize those areas that are dangerous for communities, like asbestos mines that we have rehabilitated over some years, and also some of the holdings that are nearer to communities. Through the Council for Geoscience and Mintech, We've been able to rehabilitate uh, just uh, over 121 uh, uh, sites in this case and about 20, uh, rehabilitated 20 asbestos sites. So it's a program that we are continuing, and but the liability is very huge. Mm. Deputy Minister, I know you mentioned this, but I'd like us to expand on that. I mean, the other issue, uh, as you mentioned, is that everyone wonders where these illegal miners actually sell their product. Are there any current investigations around who might be actually buying and selling uh, the mine minerals that are acquired illegally in the black market trade? And also you spoke about the legalization. How far is the department on that stance? Uh, I, can, I may confess that the acoustics are, never, are not very good, but I suspect I heard what you asked me. On the legalization, we, we have made a lot of tremendous work where some of these uh, who applied for those assets, mining permits and so on, have been assisted by the department in our small scaling mining support services. But some of those who were in the Zama Zama programs before have been gainfully employed. So the program is continuing. 
But as you would uh, know, it's not going. To, it's not very fast because you've got people to apply, and we've got to check that those applicants comply with the law. On the who, whether we know who the kingpins are, the answer is yes and no. Yes, in the sense that the, those that we have known have been arrested. And we've also established that the gold is going to very developed uh, jurisdictions that I may not mention now, where they, they go out as scrap metals. They get blended into scrap metals, and that's a matter that we are following. But in the past two years, so you, you would have picked up that many people in this industry, illegal my, uh, gold trading, have been arrested with a lot of gold and a lot of cash. Those cases have been before the courts. Mm. But also in terms of those who have been arrested, uh, about uh, 800 uh, South Africans have been arrested in the illegal mining activity, and we've got a lot of information about who else is involved. About foreign nationals who are involved in the uh, illegal activity, mining activities, we've arrested about 16,000 in the past uh, in this year alone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we're involved because we are working together with the police, with the other departments in, the, in Gauteng, but also with other state agencies. So we've been very robust in it, but I can tell you it gets better now, but flares up again later. Mm, thank you so much, uh, Deputy Minister, for that update. Uh, that is the Deputy Minister of Mineral Resources, Mr. Godfrey Oliphant. And he was talking to us about the latest incidents of illegal miners going underground, despite some having died early in the week at Langlachta.